soon, soon, we will talk about trade. But now, first, I need to spread the word. And then we'll get into it. Our, and then the game, I'll launch the server in about eight minutes. We shall get a rolling. Uh, announcements. Time for some porcos. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, soon we'll talk about uh, a mechanic that I find often mystified. So we're going to be going over it shortly. Making sure everything is running. Hmm. Output's rather low. Interesting. Hopefully... It doesn't bother the everything too badly. Uh, too, we can catch up to this later. So, <clears throat> we just started, and let us talk supply and demand, basically the fundamentals of trade, uh, using basically what I recall from, I believe, microeconomics, uh, uh, which involves the study of markets. So we're going to use our... Oh, boy. We're going to use our lovely wobbly head here, our Bismarck, uh, to uh, go over that. Just got to finish a few things. So, we'll take Bismarck here. So... In Emir, there are several things to take into consideration, which is price, demand, and supply. Now, demand is calculated uh, through ideal demand, and based on the price, you have the actual demand, and uh, then you have supply, and how much is actually sold. So those are two things to keep in mind. So ideal demand is the situation where... Uh, the good costed nothing. It only really, really matters when you get to the point of uh, the glorious phase when you start having a money in economy, and it really uh, picks off uh, picks up when you get to currency. So you have dynamic pricing, and it will matter a lot more. Uh, really have much more to go over this. So ideal demand, basically. Uh, what your porcos would demand at the value of zero. But let's go over it. So every time that we have a green, that's an increase. This blue line is no change, and this means a decrease. You know, happily done. And these double lines I just used, like this is what an action, and this would be the reaction. Normally, though, supply, um, like there'll be an action after this, supply would react. The market would naturally react to what would happen. But in Emir, you are, you, the state, determine the supply. So you're the one who determines how much of a good gets produced and where it goes and how much of it is bought. So if the price increases, demand will fall. Oops. My phone is still making the sound. And this is something to keep in mind. Now, also, furthermore, there are multi steps. We'll get that later. If the price has a change, nothing happens. The price decreases, demand will increase up to the maximum of ideal demand or price at zero. But since everything costs at least base one, aka the production, the, the porco wants at least a profit of one coin. So it's always going to cost at least one. So in the situation where demand increases, price will uh, increase in response to that if supply uh, remains constant. So you always have to take in mind that the other variable like supply will remain constant throughout each one of these steps. And then demand, no change, no change, no change. Now, when uh, demand drops and supply remains constant, the price will drop. Now, at this point, we need to talk about um, 
you know, you the state, what actions you can do and what will happen. So if you increase the supply, your demand remains the same, price will drop. Uh, if the supply stays the same, nothing happens. And if supply drops, the price will increase if demand stays the same. So in Amir, this also happens on multiple steps. So say your demand increases, your price increases. So what happens when your price increases? Well, to a certain extent, you're going to see a demand drop, but depending on your supply and your demand, it will reach equilibrium where the price and the demand have increased overall. Uh, likewise, if you increase the supply, you're going to drop down the price. And by dropping down the price, you're going to increase demand. But increasing demand will bring up the price again, so you'll eventually reach equilibrium where demand will overall be increased, even though you have more supply. Remember, up towards your maximum of your ideal uh, supply and demand. So I just wanted just to uh, demystify supply and demand mechanics in um, in Amir because I th think it will help players really understand how trade works um, if they truly understand the system. Okay, so we're gonna get the server running in about a minute. I just figured we should talk about this and uh, be ready for when the time comes. Mm -hmm. There are probably like people who have better understanding of supply and demand in real world applications, but I just remember that stuff from way back and just applied it to this. And it's essentially how the game functions. <clears throat> Anyhow. Just the last few things, and then I'm going to just load things on up here. Okay. Everything seems to be working. And we're going to bring over Hawkins here. And as always, give me a heads up if the sound is incorrect. We're going to launch the server. Hello. Hello, hello. So I'm launching the server now because it is All the right. glorious seven my time. So we're going to get this going. Uh, I basically just went over supply and demand mechanics in this game. So people. Oh, man, I missed it. Yeah, well, you know, it'll be on YouTube in about <laughs> a day. And it'll be at the beginning of the episode, so... I, I tend to watch most of it. it. It's incredibly professional. You'll notice as I just move around a Bismarck image just to... as a pointer. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, the server's up here, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get in there. Yeah, I just got to remember what I was doing. I'm pretty sure I just abandoned a colony, so... Uh... Yeah, that was... Uh, that yep, was awesome. there we go. Dealing with a little bit of that uh, honor issues. That's fine. I'm rich. <laughs> While I'm making money That's again, I want to. I, I want to call it rich, but um, there is a lot of blue on the map. Mm -hmm. A lot of what? Blue on the map. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you guys are all yeah. blue. Yeah. WDW. Yeah. Uh, but I was the first blue because I'm the server host, so y'all need to, you know, stop doing that. So Sorry, this is Hawkins Blue. This is the blue I used for everything, so or it's as close to it as I can get. So. Oh wow! Okay. It's, yeah, oh, I can't yeah, really yeah. seem to access uh, trade routes um, that are to a rebel. Oh, naturally delete, I suppose. <laughs> so the, today we basically have uh, been what ten days, ten or so days since our last uh, stream of this. That is um, what Amir is telling me. It said I was like active what nine days ago. 
Mm -hmm. And in between, I did a terminal conflict stream. That was fun. Um, I yeah. just nuked, nuked the world. Started with uh, Chinese Civil War, ended in nuclear fire. So, progress. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. It was Soviet victory. <laughs> Comrade. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so I'm getting the money again. <laughs> Um, Dr. Claw says, I can't remember what's going on. That's okay, Dr. Claw. You're in, in, me in too. Bar with the rest of us. <laughs> I can remember. We, I did a stream last, uh, on Saturday when you, uh, when you were unavailable. So we did a different game and it was, uh, part of a one that I had started recording and we ended up having oh, 19 or so people join in by the time, by the end of it, it was, it was a hoot. We had, we ran for four, four or five hours in the day and then. It also helps that uh, at this at the same time, like uh, a lot of new players just got keys. Like I've been running mm -hmm. the Force Science server, and uh, we had like a glut of new players, and then they just all kind of stopped. Uh oh, so uh, it's like ah, oh, goddamn it, all these inactives. <laughs> I just clicked in your city and was confused why I couldn't uh, trade route broken. Oh, time to get all these messages about trade routes being broken. This will be fun. Old messages. No, no, no! Because oh, okay. remember when I when I left off last time, I was I just uh, cut off all the trade. You just killed your uh, your people to the south and let them. I'll let them rot on the vine. It's fine. Yeah, that's right. Left them all for dead, man. I know you guys clearly need to come and join me, not him, because he's dangerous. He you know abandons people. It's just he's so dishonorable right now. It's terrible. It's fine. I have positive state power. All is good. Uh, so I'm going to uh, uh, be right with you, Cyrus. Uh, I'm going to uh, pop off the chat. We're good for the three hours tonight, so I presume. So we're done at uh, yeah. 10 your time then? Yeah, uh, I'll give uh, a heads up if there are any changes on my end because, you know, shit happens. And, well, yesterday we had a power outage for about, like, a good solid hour. We had a pretty nasty storm but didn't do anything to our power. So uh, it did for us, or at least my area. I'll see you near the end, or I will see you next time on the chat. So, cheers. Alrighty, cheers. Now, uh, we got to stabilize everything. At least we have positive state power, even though we have, what? That dishonor, which is hurting our legitimacy, and how's that? Okay. Right, I think I remember going over these things, and yeah, everyone's reasonably okay. Positive state balance there. Whatever, if that continues to go on, I won't mind. Still making 0.5 carats. 5 copper. I'm just going to remember what I was doing in all my cities. Remember, I haven't played in about almost two weeks now. So, so Campus Astartes is a can't cut into the forest flats. I think I was specializing in wheat. I'm hoping to export that. Am I exporting that? For people that we can use to really do that? No. Okay, so we're going to take a look here. Oh, the sad thing is, is the port did have our apples, but... We should manage, I think. Let's see what we have here. So we already have two farms set up to do wheat locally. So that's promising. It means we can set up a field for export. What are we doing everywhere else? Do we have, we have limestone, we have copper. What kind of text do we have waiting for us? Proof storage. This is actually a really useful tech here. Uh, and we will deal with that shortly. Does this place have any hunting sources? Well, let's just go look at the chat again. 
Hmm. How's your balance? Things are looking good. What are we producing here? Were we already producing wheat? Yeah. Wheat, apple, and carrot. So it's not like we can really do much trade with those goods. So maybe we won't create that field. How are we making axes and acolocally? Did it already have copper? Yeah, it did. And we did campus to start us for more copper. Okay. So we had tin here, we have copper that I believe we are exploiting. Somewhat, okay, these routes are finally ending. So we have one whole carrot. Uh, I know what we're gonna do with this one whole carrot is we're gonna transfer it. Um, so how's the copper? We're making javelins here. What's our population like? Population is growing. I think we're locally producing wood. Or are we importing? We are importing wood. We can't make charcoal yet, right? Yeah, I don't see clamps. Okay. Sorry, first a little bit is always me just figuring out what I'm doing again. Okay, what we need to do here is we're going to need to set up a merchant. He's going to trade at least 0.5 of the carrots uh, from our capital. It will help the growth here. Do we have a merchant? Importation. Where's this fish coming from? So that came from the port. So we're already bringing in carrots here. What's the demand like? Okay, so we can probably bring in another 0.5 carrots and it'd be totally fine. So, okay. Transfer carrots. We're going to just consolidate 1.5 and then we're going to just going to go in here, current exportations, current importations, and close this route. And we're just going to bring in this route. I'm going to base it from Akilopoli. I'm going to do that. So eventually this port trade will stop. I think. We have enough free workers here. Oh, well, this place was importing fish too. Shit. Yep, and there it goes. So that would be the last couple of things that we were importing from the port. So we're going to see a drop. I imagine very shortly. Here we go. Yep. Not as bad, but it'll probably get worse. Um, but from the fish. So we need to turn off a few things. On the other hand, that's freed up, uh, so, oh, yeah, that's right, because we don't have access to our, so what was this? Yeah. Uh, kind of wish uh, it would actually tell me what good was being lost in that transition, but I can live with that, so we don't need this chap anymore, because we don't get fish. We should start considering upgrading our farms so we can get some more workers so we can stop exporting textile and just straight up uh, export the good stuff. So I think since we have some spare apple, we will work on the apple upgrade first. 
Actually, let's just improve as many of these as we can. It's just going to benefit fit us to do so. So this is the beginning of our positive trade balance. It'll take time, but as you see, we can uh, maintain a relatively positive... How much extra textile am I making? 1.2. How much are you consuming? 1.2. Excellent. We're going to sell more textile to our local population. I think we have the workers for that. Oh, there goes the population drop. That was a uh, fish. Off. So we might be turning off some things in the future. How much cloth are we making? Oh, well, we'll make a bit more. That's fine. Sheraton, I understand. I have that same issue all the time. Let's see here. Every time I come back to this game, I'm like, what did I do last time? What am I doing now? Okay, so... And the question is, is we need to expand our food supply quick because we just lost a lot of fish and, uh... Yeah... We need more food for the porcos. Ah, the hell with it. Um, 90% exploited, so we really expended this way too quickly. we we'll probably get rid of about four, three, four? I think four. Yeah. We're just going to make much more money. We're going to also want like 10. So uh, the farmers aren't really losing money in the meantime. So we want to maintain stock of about what? 20. And state ownership of 20 as well. Same with apples. We're just going to boost this up to 20. Or we're just going to level this off. Already kind of staved it a little. Uh, carrots, yeah. But well, we've loved a lot of textile. Textile will do more in the future. How much cloth are we selling to our people? 4.8. So we've really, you know, done well there. Uh, carrots. Again, going into a little bit of debt to increase something like our population. Not a bad trade-off, definitely, since we really want to make more money. Are we producing all the tools that we need? So you're producing hammers. Now you're going to produce hoes. You are producing axes. You're producing hoes. So we have enough hammers on hand. What we really need are more hoes so we can get more fields out. Are we producing enough flint? What's the demand? We should... We need more flint fields. Um, do we have the spare population for something like that? Not particularly. Our actives are slowly going up, but... Um... Eventually, we're going to take our 35 surplus here and really use it. <clears throat> I 
Because the budget is key. Not so much I might even need for stone though, so we will turn off these guys for now. Eventually I'll be creating sorges that only they can go into. Actually, where's our clay? Is this all imported? Out of curiosity. No, we're exporting it actually. So for now, let us find our clay. There we go. We're just going to shut him off. Um, eventually this uh, will decline, but we need to keep that in mind. Um, to population like. Now we have people willing to do work. What's our demand for flint light? So we have more flint than we are consuming hose. Okay, uh, we need lots of these. Uh, likewise, I want to own at least 16 of these, and I want to own 32 of these if we ever start producing these. So I want these guys to work full tilt. Oh good, we're going to lose. I don't think we have the ability to defend against that. Dear lord, we don't have the ability to defend against that. Yeah, that's a lot of warriors. I hope they're just here to raid. I rather obsolete fort design. We making? Yeah, so they're attacking here. Ha! <laughs> ah, right. I had to. Yeah. Really cut some things down. These guys are not. Oh, they're gonna invade. Oh, this is gonna be a really short session. Oh yeah, we are very dead men because those boat pigs have far greater range than we do. I might just restart, not the server, but just get a new account going. Are these not? Well, that's good. Some of our defenders were outside the fort. Uh, this is great. <laughs> uh, if Akilapuli falls, I'm just going to create a new character. And we'll be doing everything right. <sighs> yeah, as you can see, our we will not be able to stand against these guys. All they have to do is that. And we're dead. All, and all I really need to do now is they can just invade, and they shall, because there are no more troops for them to uh, kill. I think we might have, like, some citizen forces, but I really doubt it. Sometimes you just gotta pack up. It really sucks because I did the server way back when I was still trying to remember how to play Ymir again. And now that I can play it far better than uh, I would uh, usually put myself at, so it's kind of a shame. But there's not much that we can do at this point. <sighs> Damn shame though, we we just won't be able to take this back. One, those are axe pigs, uh, and we're gonna need a huge force to win against them. 
And uh, same with bow pigs. We don't have a natural source of copper. Oh well, no, a uh, natural source of leather at our other location. So this is the uh, epitome of if you fuck up too much, you won't be able to cope with the barbarians. And the barbarians will eventually, well, they will win. Uh, so if you do too much fucking over, too many fuck ups, it will come to bite you in the ass. But this is a mirror, so uh, nat so it, this is just how it rolls. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> gonna launch the client again. We're gonna abandon that old one. And hopefully, well, I haven't used an account in a while, so. What? Oh, good. The Steam lobby is being a pain in the ass. Fantastic. Yeah, ouch with the Raiders. Yeah, that's rather brutal. So, I have put it in community for those having issues trying to join the server. Eh, no real point. If they've only somewhat started, then it's just, uh, we're just going to abandon this. Yep, warning. Oh, no. Um, so, what? The new Acularii, the new Acularii, the new Acularii. That's a nice icon. Aculari, star test. Still like the googly eyes, they are my favorite. Uh, let's see. Are there any Eretz? Ah, oh, there are about three. So let's see what we get with an Eretz star. Or maybe I'll go with Tempered again. Are there any Tropical? Well, there's a few Tropical. So I haven't done an Eretz in a long time. So let's see what we get. Probably be like Arid Plains, no river, and we're all going to cry and be sad. Yeah, I'm not seeing a river. So uh, that will be that. Yeah, okay. That's fine, we'll do what we can here. A new Aculopoly. <laughs> okay. Oh, at least we'll be able to access this fish. Ah, ah, ah. Not salty at all. Next is usual. What do we have? Lettuce and chickpeas. Yeah. And then hunting. We only have one hunt. Don't two. That's not bad, actually. Uh, that's good fertility. That is not. We're going to put this down here. Uh, oh, we have camels. So hopefully we luck out and eventually we capture those. Yeah, uh, don't know if people know, but I have a history with fish in this game. Normally I don't get it. That's it. I just cannot find fish. Usually it's not a thing I, I achieve. Well, that's not bad. So, 
I think this will largely be ranch land. You know, if I just set you here, fuck. Can, can we not game? Just let me, let me click. <laughs> ah, gathering. So we're going to do that pretty simply. Um, yeah, that's fine. We want to make sure we have at least 16 for now. And then the game's going to be like, you need tools. And I'm going to agree wholeheartedly. We need tools. Uh, we just need to do what it asked for in the beginning. That's a... Uh... Actually, we could probably just build... No, we got hunting camp here. We could build our city down here. All right, that's not really a great fortifiable position. Downside, not a whole lot of food. Like, not a whole lot of wood. It's, uh, the downfall... of arid locations, not a lot of wood. Yeah, go ahead. If you can take it, it's yours. get some wood can we get a four or five anywhere these <laughs> getting fours but I'm not seeing four or fives and that's concerning come on game oh good we have one ha ah! that's gonna be interesting Okay, so that means we definitely need to look into a forest tile next, because these guys are already working below efficiency. And we're not even that far along. And at this point, you should be rather concerned. Um, upside, we have plenty of space for ranching, so we can produce a lot of leather. We just need a lot of wood to build all those uh, pastures. And 3.6 will do. Open up those jobs. Yeah, and all my capital fell, and I don't think, uh, because I was so poor for most of it, I don't think Campus Astari, Acularii would, uh, would be strong enough, actually. Oh, not fire one, higher one. We just need to be able to produce the point five. get this mission rolling a bit. Formations, new formation. I'm not sure we'll, where I'll eventually build the fort. Probably around the city, so probably around here. Yes, I'll take the free warriors. New formation. Uh, we'll rename it later. Now that we know what the fuck we're doing, we're going to leave with that. Trigger, and we get sedetism. As fast as we can. And we'll really get more population. Wow. Once we get these people into housing, uh, we need wells. That's going to be 
the thing that screws us over for the longest time. Now you're going to tell us to build housing. Which is fine, I totally agree. It's going to be the corner. Okay, so that should be enough for now. First explorers. Pretty much have this done. Information. Get like three to span like what two? Nah, I'm good. I one I abandoned it. Two I'm gonna be able to make an account for a while. Three uh, the main issue is because um, I would still be hit by another 150 wave. At some point, you're just better off trying again, learning from what you had. And I know how to play this game much better now with uh, the Four Science server I typically run. Like I can show a screenshot of like show uh screenshots of how that looks actually i don't want to build this here buildings delete and one thing i definitely want to stress to people who play this game do not get attached like to your cities that should be enough of a gap. If you get some of the leather around, first explorers are done. Population should really grow. Let us evict people. Okay, so this is going to force them all into houses, which is great. Um, it'll give us a rough idea how many more families we need to shove into a tent. The tent is wildly better than a slum. Like... Minus five health, and a tent is already plus six. Again, that's like a difference of an 11. You can't go wrong. And also improve their life quality, and thus they'll be able to research better. So we'll get some growth. We'll have more of our people to work. Okay, let's see if we can find other players. Eight units of Procanderthal. That's a good amount of resources there. Team loot. Spears and stone. Okay. Uh, we will take what we can. 15 stone. So we're going to take this all back. This will be helpful once we eventually get stove building tech. Yeah, it might be another continent. So this will be fun. We'll be... Relatively isolated, but that means we'll just need to, uh... Alright, so let's see what's surrounding us. So I'm just working on my notes over to the side. So this is one north. Okay. This is a swamp tile. Also forested. So I'm going to keep in mind. Plenty of stone. We'll need that. And we have enough for like the beginning of the game. as limestone. But no other resources other than a shit ton of clay. Maybe in the future. But there's nothing that well, I'll note it down. It's got a good amount of limestone. And it does have forests. 
There's not much I can do with it. Also, I don't have wheat. I need to find wheat. Uh, wheat would open up a lot of possibilities for me. So, explored this. Um, I don't. I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna call this one. What is this like? Continental. Ah, I'll deal with that in a second. Cont four swamp. Got limestone. Decent deposit. And that's all I really have to say about it. I didn't see anything immediately that stuck out. Yeah, nothing else immediately sticks. Jack growth, we have unemployment, so that's positive. Should worry about a fort soon. Let us take a look at, I was what? Rocky Swamps Forest? Oh, that's just all sorts of not helpful. So, swamp rock. I think I'm looking here now. Well, we have a um, small amount of copper. Not ideal. Really not ideal, but something we need to write down. Two. Uh, what's Continental Forest Hills? I will just count to four. And I know for sure that we have some copper here. Not a whole lot. I would not be impressed about it. Lime bunny, actually. Lobby's still pending. I'm gonna take Discord. This seems to be all right. Oh, it's got some gold, actually. Okay, you kind of making your way into my heart here. It's not that useful, but it is a luxury good. Just wish I had more copper. Stacking stones, we have the inactives to do this, so off we go. That was Continental Rocky Forest. Um, there's a reason why I'm prioritizing forest because we don't have a whole lot of that and that will be an ideal second tile if we can get one with plenty of copper, which would help us out a lot. Let us see here. Um, again, not looking good. Yes, I'll take ex eight extra families. If we can somehow proc wells, that would be ideal. I don't see anything here. That's just the herd that's here. Nothing really sticks out. Normally it'd be around here. This is like a spawn is an X. So dash C dash. Okay, so let's 
So you can look down here. <sighs> mm. Not seeing anything here that <clears throat> I would want. There's literally nothing here. Well, aside from a shit ton of forest, which nice in their own way. We're gonna take a look at this one. Oh, I think I've turned off Amir Music. I need to turn that on again. Options, sound. I'll put it at 30. Ooh. I think I've turned, if uh, there are problems with the sound, no, I don't want to go Amir. Just give me a heads up. I will correct it. So we have clay. Eh, some char coal. Eh. Ah. I want to just like clay and forest. I go to the swamp. Like Shrek. This is uh, not a good time. Not for what I need. Okay, so we need to look at more forest tiles above us. Scene has this is here. This strikes me as someone has re like explored over here. Nah, um, it was like uh, 150 porcos with 20 bowmen, like 20 axe pigs, about what 30 snouts? I think about 40 snouts and a lot of warriors and some jab pigs. Uh, the longest range unit uh, was definitely just a jab pig on my end. So. Uh, they were very dead. Cadaverific. Team four star terminology here. We're gonna just take a look at these four tiles. And more nothing. X that. Maybe here. Uh, does not look promising. Do you like fish sticks? Yes, I really do. 
I think this will be the first time I can actively use uh, fish immediately. It's been a while since I've ate fish for my starting tile. Saw nothing there, so we're going to move up another one. Broken. So we do know a player around us somewhere. So I think that's uh, our cue to put up a modicum of defense, or at least get a fort put down, and work from there. Oh, these are nice. Uh, military. So we have our fort. It should uh, serve nicely. And we'll pretty much build from around this fort. What I normally do after I build a fort, I move all my storages around it. Thing we need to do. New formation note, strategic tool. We need to create a defensive zone inside. Yeah, you defaulted to that. You did not. Put you inside. You here. Defensive zone you. Excellent. Stacking stones was successful. So we should see about finding some more. We should get some out of that. Do we have like more spots? No, not really. <clears throat> so this will probably be the extent of how much stone we can get for a long time. That's fine, at least we're getting some. Slowly losing that. We just need two more for a nice little form. Now, we need to look at this tile. That. In about 10 minutes, I'm gonna grab a quick bite to eat, bring it down, and we will uh, go from there. <laughs> so we have some very basic basic fortifications. Uh, yeah, we can use the extra work. Okay, lots of coal. Lots of, yep, here we go. This is it. This is it, boys. This is what we want. And we want this. This is three. This is a must. So three is 
definitely continental forest. We'll fi figure out more later. Uh, but it's got a sh metric shit ton of copper. It's also got a nice, decent supply of coal. Uh, really do not care about the other things, but those two are the most important. Um, downside, we also it does have a local supply of carrots. So, um, good to know. I need to claim this. We need this. That is vital. Okay, so now that we know that, that pretty much loosens up the restraints that we have. Now that we found a pretty ideal tile for copper and forest, sometimes you have to settle for less, but if you can, you need to really plan out your second city. And this fell into our lap and we need to be aware of it. So now I think it's time that we take stop, stock of our capital of Nova Aquilopoli, which I'm going to rename it to that. I know it had two hunting spots. It has at least one fish. It has chickpeas and lettuce. And what kind of tile is this? Is this an arid flat? So a nice player has given us a nice amount of text here. So immediately I want to research throwing sticks. I also want to get water in the ground. And I want to start hunting companions right away, even though this will be hurt our growth a little bit. But if we get some jabs up, that will, uh, if that's still not working, then, um, no, that's it. 76, 68, 2, 2, 10, and 14, 804. Well, they can't join. They can't really do much about it. <laughs> do you like fish sticks was done, so we're going to hook this up. Since this is food, this is critical.
Okay, everyone is now in the defensive zone. I want to make sure that javelins are in here. We're gonna get max. We have a lot of unemployment. Good, we're getting fish now at least. Ah, it's because of all this extra meat. Yeah, that would do it. Uh, we're gonna put, I suppose, the spears as well. Restricted. Allow uh, the spears. Max. Just gonna put this nearby. I wanna make sure that these are only unrestricted. Likewise, this is going to be over here. This is only going to be certain resources. And with this, restricted. Authorize. Empty all. We'll get max. Restricted. Allow. What? Chickpeas? Yeah. Empty all. Get max. Only restricted. Good, all that was done, so we're going to upgrade our hunting camps. Good, that's good. Um, hunting camps. So we want more leather. Always nearby. Here we go. And I was just looking, decreasing to 63. Well, root an extra four. We are going to just demand four out of this one to compensate. Uh, we will disband these carriers for now. Get that population back, and also build more housing. For all the porcos.
Now we need to build a weapon maker. We do not have the leather for that. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna get rid of these. Okay, so they're slowly rebuilding them, but the houses aren't up yet. We have fast build. Growth relatively high. is joined by three walls. Good to know. Don't get involved. More walls. Okay. Let's see. Well, we're slowly getting the leather again. hammers and 10 javelins. Fantastic. Guess our militia's getting an upgrade. 48. So this is the militia Aculari. As a nation one. So we're gonna unload 11 to start. Unload all the hammers. We're going to reinforce this. We're gonna disband this. Then we're gonna disband this. And we're gonna unload the rest of the javelins. And start up another one. Progress. Strategic tool. Good, everyone's where they should be. Uh, population is declining, that's fine. We knew it was gonna happen. Uh, I should have enough now for, not yet. Someone took over your second town? That's fine. Um, Godspeed, good luck. It's got copper and you have some wood. But you only have wheat. And no leather. At a point in the game where you need leather. So, uh, good luck. <laughs> I should not have done that. free meat. Okay, take this back. Uh, what's the loyalty coming down to? 43? Not bad.
Um, there's not much there to do that, and I hope by now people like Sheraton and Drake have, like, javelins. That will... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, like, um... And if they are bad, I can just... Like, I've noted down their IP addresses, so, uh... So if they get out of hand, I'm just going to block them. And they probably are, all things considered. But I, I hope... I see them as smarter barbs, yeah. And uh, I hope by at this point you guys have, like, solid defenses. You should have bow pigs and such. Like, I... Like, uh... Boniface here has already, you know, helped me out. And given me jab tech. Go for it. Reverse grief. Actually, please do so. That'd be hilarious. And tell me the results. family's home. Let's see here. Got some growth. Again, this will be okay once um, these guys get up to a uh, threshold that I have set. Yeah, axe pigs and snouts. You can crush them with impunity. If you are curious, the players that have recently joined that I suspect are griefers, and they are well known, are John Fat and Fatius Pacius. So, uh, yeah, if you see leaders like those, go nuts! Uh, John Fat and Fatius Orcus. I'll just write it down. Oh, Pacius. Advise and watchful eye. Uh, kind of well known in the community as being kind of, uh, griefers. But an exploit that needs fixing. Really, I wish we had just had better server powers because no one will join a server if the admin would abuse it. But, um,. Okay, let's produce more javelins. Um, well, given that you're here, kind of says it all. And you're uh, kind of well known. Okay, well, they're war nations, Sheraton, so uh, have fun.
Oh no, I just said, uh, you're War Nation, so I just said, Sheraton, have fun. No, uh, I can't remember the exact details of the exploit, but it has something to do with the fact that uh, you're abusing the loyalty counter, and I can't remember the details behind it. One, they didn't want to, like, disclose it. Obvious reasons. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Those guys are just going into the respective housing. go with the other server hosts and uh, <clears throat> I trust them on this one well, that was quick well, the three families
Yep, there we go. He's attacking my city. That's the other thing. I can't actually declare war on him until he declares war on me. Okay. this My Emir does not want to load. Mm -hmm. Yeah, launch client. Crokin just got wiped. Yeah. Just coming at me with just like a few units. Yeah, I guess so. They're just attacking, but they don't have. Anything to attack with. That's just 13 warriors and they're going to be forced to attack. Uh, my troops. Battle is over. Send him up here. Make this the army. Expand that. Reinforce this. Send them up. And new formation, militia, some javelineers. Yeah, I know. Yeah, 
killed all them. They gave me extra wood. Oh, this is good because now my Jows are on the water. So whatever forces they do have, they're just going to die because we can just pelt at them. Yeah, if you'd be so kind to give Kroken his town back, that'd be great. So, it's essentially open season. If you guys want to, like, kill those two players, you're more than welcome to. Good. Destroy him. <laughs> ah, good. All of his stupidity is dead. And this will be Militia Auxilia. One. I'm going to turn it back to the Militia. We're going to disband about nine. Destination one, so we have our forces separated up into three. Not bad. Make sure all my forces are behind walls, and they are. Thing is, is uh, militia work well, but you need defenses. And he shouldn't be able to join back for at least four hours, at which point players will be further along again. Yeah. I guess I accidentally deleted that. Whoops. Thankfully we have some a few hammers on hand. to get more housing. Anyway, I'm gonna mute a little bit. We will be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Now, every so often, I'm just gonna grab. I'm gonna mute my microphone and eat. But if you have questions, feel free to, like, ask them. I will do my best to answer. Ah, that's not so bad. All those free families that we found. Take them back. What a waste it starts, though. families join us. Hawkins wants to chat? Sure. Hello? Hey, how's it going? Oh, not too bad. So uh, we had our first little taste of griefers. Yes. Are you uh, watching the griefers? Are they on your side of the world too, or just over? Oh, I, I already wiped one out. Oh, did you? Where? Well, he uh, basically like packed up everything and uh, you know, and then settled like right next to me because he's a ah, smart yes. cookie and uh, thought that uh, thirteen warriors could take on like twenty-four javelineers behind walls. With Ten worries a compliment, and uh, when that failed, I just uh, he evacuated his city, and then I just moved my troops there, and said Wait. fuck off. Now it's kind of exploitative because I know he's a griefer, but I can't declare war on him until no, but you can record the info, and that's what uh, uh, Raji's been asking people to do. Uh, so if you could check the server and get the ID of the uh, the Pakistan, the chief of Pakistan. Fattiest Pacius. I don't know name. if it, if he is a greed, griefer, but he I can is, get absolutely. his height. Yeah, he just went up. He just went up and attacked uh, Ante's city and did the same thing. Grabbed all the population on the cheat because you're not you're not supposed to be able to pull them out. But if you instantly click the evacuate, you grab yeah. a bunch of troops and leave. Um, in like the first in real time, you got like less than a minute to grab stuff and leave. And he did that, and then he charged down after somebody else, and so we all declared war on him. And then he renamed his uh, city to nigger so yeah the other one was pakistan too it was rather yeah. tame by comparison but yeah no i have their ids here i'm gonna write them down actually okay. i'm gonna so, close my client so i'm not attacked by barbs in the meantime sure yeah uh, the uh yeah it, it was it's pretty pretty nasty but uh the western hemisphere here those of us who are 
were awake and alert at the time responded i don't know if ante's got the city back yet or if he's going to have it back yet but uh yeah I'm, go I, I'm gonna get their user ids which is their steam ids right so i think it does yeah i think it links to the steam ids Seven. Those keys, I, I'll, I'll talk to Ranchi. If you can hand me, get me those keys or that info, I will uh, track him down and see about uh, having those keys revoked because they can. He can pull the game on them, so like he can cancel their. Okay, access. so I've got one. So what I'm the gonna. Heck? Uh, basically, there were players 15 through 17 uh, for me. I already noted them down and their IP addresses, but IP addresses change, right? So it's just their user IDs that I need to uh, note down. Now, I wonder if. Um, the server has that saved, like as info yeah. for player info uh, information. So I'm going to nice. see if I can just copy paste that, so we don't accidentally get rid of someone else's account. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it. There we go. He got his city back. That's good. Um, yeah. So uh, I basically the barbs basically took my city. I was like, you know what? I've made so many mistakes on this, so uh, it's better just to start fresh. I know it's not the most exciting thing to watch, but yeah. it's better when you do things the right way. So if uh, Ante is on chat on either sides, I just sent a message there, sir. If you can, uh, um, if you can let me know what's going on and get back in chat with me, that would be awesome. And I think we have probably got the situation taken care of. Uh, let's um, see here. We went into battle his, uh, to attack his city, and he has he now has six warriors there. I actually went in to invade this time because I've got fifteen snouts there. They should oh, that, take care of him. That's more than enough. I, he, we attacked, and there was nobody showing as a defense, and then the troops just left. It's just like we backed out when he when he spawned troops. We backed out and left. Yeah, so um, something a little off there. So if he attacks with just like civilians, they just don't do well uh where <laughs> like they'll, they'll retreat if there are no melee units um uh, game data i'm trying to find the thing ah uh, it's all encrypted so i wonder if launch has the information yeah it might be just to stop people from griefing the other way where you, you know, server people grab this you know, well grab the info and then cause them trouble yeah no i'll write it down but i was hoping i could just Um, I find it here. No, it's kind of there's definitely an encryption, so I have to do it manually, and I can just hope for the best. Okay. Actually, you know what? Um, if, <laughs> if you allow me, I am going to pack up this server, and then I can just give it to Ranch because it will have all the information here, and we just tell him oh, it was yeah. 50, players 15 through 17. Okay. Uh, it was 15 through 17. I, yeah, I only there got was... one over here, so. There was a group of them. Yeah, there was a group. Yeah, it's clearly a bunch of bunch of the idiots running around causing trouble, and that that type of person. I mean, there yeah. should be a so, way for him to track who the owner of those accounts are, what the Steam owner of those accounts are, and then revoke that account. Yeah. So I'm closing the server. Yeah, understood. Just so I can pack it up. Yeah, perfectly good. So you're making a copy of the of the server file and sending it to Ranch. Right, that's what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm just okay. packing it up. Then I'm gonna upload it onto. Uh, I'm gonna put it on support. I think that'll be an appropriate place to put it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm gonna take Ronch and just say players 16 through 17 are the offenders. Uh, and he can watch the video. Yep. And yeah, listen, he can let him know he's got plenty of context here to see what's going on. I was like, oh, oh yeah, was, no, uh, it wasn't so much his settle settlement name that was offensive. It was his diplomatic message. It was like L A L, words that should not be said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the pattern that like uh, uh, primordial server was having the same issues with the same people. Um, and part of the problem is the the glitch that happens with um uh well part of the pro two problems you can't ban server owners can't ban people specifically yeah then that's you can kick the player you can remove the player but then they just come back an hour later right like you can you can go through and you can mess with it apparently you can force abandon them if you know how to get do so um it's not intentionally available for players to do so but 
you can mess with it. And then, um, but then they just come back an hour later because they go and mess with somebody else's server and then they come back and mess with this one. And that's a big, you know, grief is something that kills games real quick. So, well, it's, uh, oh, there's a ground storage swastika in Kroken 2. Classic. Right. Yeah, good God. Yeah, it's just, this is just the, absolute it's it's it, it's bound to happen in any community society. i just kind of wish it wasn't this early on yeah well ah <sighs> they get their little moment of fame on our tiny little channels here and it's kind of annoying yeah well, it's not it's i mean there's not a moment of fame these people nobody knows them except for those jerks that nobody likes like it's like it, you know the bully sort of on the playground and everybody's like yeah nobody even likes you when they say we like you or that was funny we don't like you You're anyway i'm gonna society that shouldn't be there <laughs> yeah no uh I'm pretty sure the prisons are built for people like that and yeah. i was like at first i was like oh no not griefers that's not what's going on and then i realized that it, it, that it was and we're like you know it's yeah no i i kind of got a hint when they were like your your uh, ip thing wasn't working it's like these things look familiar and i have been warned by other server owners like hit the man who runs primordial uh Draxiv, uh who yeah. runs uh holy quest for swords uh these are like uh persistent servers so they run much slower mm -hmm. um and likewise emin Amenity, who runs Solarium, which I also play on, um, like we're all a pretty respectable uh, hosts, and uh, we wish we just had a bit more control, um, so we didn't have to go through such roundabout ways. It it it's annoying when like people say, "Well, oh, you can't give control to people that run servers because." Because then they then they cause you. Know, yeah, but then their servers groups. will be empty. That's a poor exactly. argument so, because people yeah, will exactly. know those hosts. Yeah, it's like, oh, that's hosted by Aculeus, and eh, not joining that one. Yeah, you know, that's, that's what the legit. That one's like. hosted by Hawkins. He's a dick, so nope. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the result response you get right away. So, but as uh, an I admin, I can't say I know this player is a trouble troublemaker, so I can't do yeah. anything about it. <laughs> yeah, even if you could put like a, uh, you know a ban on on them or kick them or something yeah okay the fight's still going on good and the thing is is like banning their usage of like a game feels more like extreme than just banning them from your server individually yeah no i think i think the server shouldn't have any ability to stop them from stop somebody from playing but you should be able to stop anybody you want from playing on there should be a blacklist right yeah so Transaction tracking. Mm, new resource. Scribes. Yay. So, yeah, as you know, the server is back up and running. It is, and I'm excited. I can get a cool dude called Scri Scribes. Um, they produce research, don't they? Uh, no, they produce uh, administration, actually. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, arguably more important, but uh, you won't be able to build the structure until I think bronze working. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it needs shovels. I have a new it also consumes a lot of clay. Like, I think one unit of scribes will eat up, like, either points on paper or, like, 1.4 clay, depending on how much, like, efficiency uh, policies you got going on. Treaty proposal from Aculeria for Startus. Ceasefire ends war be ends between enemy. What? Did you just come across me, or... Oh, it's probably just one of those server things. Peace treaty, peace... Oh, this is old stuff. Yeah. Some of these are, like, yeah, just spewing out the old info at me. Oh, I just realized that I have, like, turned down my desktop audio. So you were probably coming yeah. across much more quiet than you should have. Oh, well, if, it, if it's the, the concern there, I'm sure nothing important was said. <laughs> Who wants peace <laughs> after being wiped? Ha! What's who wants peace? It's, uh, the Sheraton was talking about a griefer wants peace after being wiped. Yeah. yeah. So he sent the peace treaty to him too, huh? No. Um. If you see them, run them into the ground. Yeah. No. Well, we our, our server our our continent has responded. And uh, happy well, to Well, the thing is, it's out. like it was very stupid of them to join a server this mature because you guys have snouts and at least javelins as militia. 
Yeah. Well, and he's usually like, fortifications. Like for me, it was kind of like iffy there, but I'm used to building my forts in like seconds mm -hmm. because it's something I stress to new players. Get a yeah. fort up. No. It doesn't have to be an elaborate <laughs> structure of like the Ma Maginot line. It just yeah. needs to be able to put a defensive zone in there and protect your if squishies. It's sticks and dudes can stand behind it. It's a win. <laughs> yeah, that's really all you need. I don't care if the wind will blow it down, so long as the enemy can't get through it so quickly. Yeah. Now well, this uh, invasion of this city is taking forever. Um, like. I'm curious what I have to do. Like how how's I, I clicked invade because I need we need to destroy him. Um, because uh, I'm not going to sack the city, because that'll destroy my honor. Yeah, that's that's pretty rough. But if you can hold the city, then like invading is just going to uh, you're going to control it essentially. Mm -hmm. It's your old. Uh, oh, my old um, capital. Uh, yeah, no, that's no, not bad. Not your old capital. It's the one below it. There's the forest below it. There, it's just finished. Now it is. No, it was it was kind of interesting. It kind of livened up the fact that I just joined in. What did? Sorry, what what livened up the fact? Well, I, I made a new account, right? Forward. So I've yeah, essentially yeah. been sent back, and I hopefully Crow. Oh, see. If you guys can uh, help out the character of Crokin, he gave me some text. He helped me get to Jazz pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. That's Ante. So, if he's in chat, Ante is Crokin. Yes, I believe so. Okay, uh, if you like. You might not need it, but if if you can, like, uh, help him out. Yeah, he pretty much boosted me to a level where I can easily hold off some griefers. And uh, his city was actually taken, I believe, so I don't know how much damage was uh, done. Yeah, he's 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 directly northeast of me. We I was w watching these guys, and they walked by, and I sent him a nice message. Hey, welcome to the server, uh, to this Pakistan guy, because I didn't realize there was a name connection there. I thought, oh, cool, somebody's, you know, role-playing or whatever. No. And apparently they, uh... Nah, they're, they're just, you know... Oh, what the heck? Oh, my gosh. Barbs? Uh, yeah. Aculopolis just spawned. It's <laughs> 100... 122... No. 97 onto my snout. Whoa! Yeah, are they raiding? They're raiding it too, so they'll kill off my guys. 15, which I paid 100, 200 coin to get the outfits. It's ugh, just silly timing. Well, I mean, I wish they would be invading it. Like, take the darn thing. <laughs> I can't believe it's actually a really nice prize. It's, uh. Not, not Acula. Uh, like my not capital Acula, can not, have. Your, not your capital. The one below it. Oh, uh, the one below it is Sardis. what Kraken. What, uh, not Kraken. What, uh, became Pakistan. And. He hit the city, and then uh, um, he took that city. Then he ran up past me because I had defenses. So I must be north ground. of you. Is uh, what I'm gathering from all this. Why? You must be. Yeah, because uh, Kroken apparently is nearby me. He, you don't know what to do with Kroken. Um, did he destroy any of like your hunting spots and stuff like that? Because that's rather rough. Oh, oops. Yes. Missy aim. It's terrible. So, uh, yeah, if if you can confirm that uh, Ante is croaking, I will be happy to help him out. Yeah, no, it looks like he is. He's, uh, to be honest, yeah. I don't know what to do with croaking. It's like, well, oh, we'll but still a functional city? Okay, well, we'll just uh, get it going. And uh, we'll, we'll just go from there. So that's all I can really... Years? Suggest. Yeah, if, if we can help him out, that's fine. This, the, I mean, those guys are gone at least for an hour. Oh, and, he just doesn't uh, like hopefully. the spot? Uh, if you haven't joined recently, feel free to you know, do a new spot. You could... Uh, well, I was going to say, you could set... Wow, they wiped out my units entirely and cleared out most of the stuff, including four extra spears and four extra leather. None of that's just probably the ones from my snouts. I killed 25 of the barbarians coming in at me. Um, thanks. Informing me that the invasion of Pakistan succeeded after it already got raided by barbarians. <laughs> oh well. Alright, well, I think he shut down. I think he crashed everything in the city. I think he actually. Oh, Ante found a new spot that he likes, so he's probably going to move there. Jayberg, welcome back to the stream. 
Oh, that's good. Uh, is he like relocating his city? Can he do that at this size? I don't know, but if he can, I hopefully it works out for him. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I will. I'll let you go. Yep. And, uh, we'll chat more we'll near the end that later. Yeah. Well, I see the borders of someone to the south here. I just noticed I also have the, a ton of resources, probably from the guy um, who was north of us, who just took all of his stuff. Sorry, I'm slowly getting some food in my belly. More wolves. There are more wolves than warriors. There we go. 100% of the food inventory. Um, what will probably happen is they will just, uh, Ranch will probably just ban their keys. I don't know uh, what the exact details are. We were talking about it earlier. But uh, he does want to clamp down on that kind of stuff. It's from what I recall. Yeah. They call it aggressive nation. And uh, I was like, no, that's not being aggressive nation. I know I did that. I've been Mongol pigs, and what you're doing is uh, actually a really poor way of doing it. There are easier ways. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure the extent of Raunch's uh, powers as a developer, but like, uh, 
Like Steam itself has uh, community guidelines, right? And uh, when you're looking at these players, they're obviously, uh, you know, not following that very well. And normally people don't really care in single player games, but when you're playing with like a commu larger community, I think they're typically more enforced as far as Steam enforces things. Do I know for sure? Not really, but, uh... Might be there. Um, I don't know what the like, what Ronch can actually do. Um, to be honest, like they don't need their. I would rather just uh, admin powers uh, as a host over them losing their keys because you know if they want to be assholes, then uh, well, let them. But uh, also allow us the host of servers to uh, moderate our servers because uh, when I host a server, I'm doing it for a community, and usually for community events, like a live stream. Or, you know, I just want to hang around with uh, the community itself. But, uh... I, I don't need to, uh... Like, live with abuse. I'm playing the game for fun. I am not a masochist. Definitely since I'm, you know, publicly streaming. Dragokin, um, although he doesn't play any longer, he has uh, really locked up this this river system. Had it with these motherfucking snakes. Uh, it's more agricultural food. Well, at least if an event happens. Oh, this is, this was uh, an old account we had set up. It's fallen. Damn snakes. We have found bananas. Yeah, we'll bring these families along. I think we'll start heading back now. Gontran... Burnaboo. Burnaboo. Uh, given his low 
Sure, I'm not entirely sure what kind of player this is. Oh wow, we are just losing troops. I'm not throwing a center. Anyhow, let's slowly make our way back, not through the Procanthrothals over here that I know exist. That's appreciated, but again, I'm I'm in no real rush. Um Yeah, given that I think that last one is probably player 18. Uh probably um not around anymore. It was probably with that group. So, but I can't make conjecture. I know it was 15 through 17. Or at least 15, 16. Let's unload the bananas, let's discard these chickpeas. And force with six. Piglets. None. Found another ostrich. the 15 primitives that I knew were going to happen at one point. Oh, thank you for the follow, uh, CSSR7.
Uh, what am I playing on? I'm playing on Accu Hawkins. It should be publicly shown now in the lobby menu. It says Steam Lobby OK, so it should actually be visible. You're more than welcome to join. Um, see, the thing is, is like I don't mind as a player going out and raiding other players. Like that's fine. Definitely, if you are doing so to build up your civilization, that is a legitimate strategy. Um, but there's a difference between doing that than literally not doing any of that. You're literally just removing players from the server and you go until you're destroyed. That is why we call them suiciders because they're not really contributing. You're not building a civilization. I did Mongol pick play. I've, I removed, well, I, you know, raided someone into submission once and then I, uh, basically got someone so angry that he's been raided constantly that he just packed up and was going to try to attack me but then I wiped him out in the field and then you know I was essentially a local hegemon on my southern part of the island and I had like the host up north like that's legitimate strategy Like, I have done that. Oh, good. Yeah, that's a pretty good description. These griefers are basically the Minecraft version of the sort of griefer that barely even bothers making a wooden pick for griefing. Like, you're not adding. Uh, the whole point of a mere, yeah, yeah, combat is one of the, is like another means, right? Sorry, singing pipes in the background. I try to mute it when that happens. Well, the point of Amir, like, there is combat, there is war, there is raiding, there is invading, there is sacking. These are all means to, like, holy fuck. Yeah, that's it. Combat is a tool that you should further your nation. You, know, you can raid and all that. And I encourage you to, uh, definitely on players that don't have basic defenses up. That is l legitimate. I do it. I've done it multiple times. But I'm also building a nation, or I'm building my city state at this point in the game. That's all we are. But if you can't even manage to do that, like, why did you waste the money to buy the game? You're just doing it to ruin the experience of other players. And that's not really good. Definitely since uh, removing players from around you is typically actually more harmful uh, to your long-term uh, game than it is helpful because those are future trading partners. Those are someone that can specialize or work on goods that maybe you can't produce nearly as much of and you can import from them. 
They might get texts that you are suddenly tech locked out of. They could become a part of your greater nation when you nations form together to essentially become empires. Or basically your United States of America. You have several states united under one leader. Like, um, there's an example. Like, I've seen this list full of players. Like, you had Draxav at the top here. Uh, and then, like, a march that ran uh, several other players. Combat is a tool to improve your nation. It is not a tool to, like, limit and ruin the fun of others. Well, it is going to ruin the, to a certain extent. You know, losing isn't fun, isn't the most exciting, but, you know, it's a mirror, and losing is a part of the experience. You live and learn, which is why I must stress, get this up. Get this fort going. Get a defensive zone. Put some troops in there. Keep a, at least a head of the barbarians. Make sure that you are the least inviting target. Because there will be players that will take advantage of you. If you do not uh, keep up with the arms race. Now, I am no spokesperson for the community, but I, I, I think they would agree with, you know, my assessment. Uh, it wasn't so much as that. As, uh, I find, actually, that population, uh, that barbarians seem to be tied to population. Like how much population you have and your tech. So the bigger population you have, uh, the more that they send at you. Actually, a hundred snouts is nothing either once you get like 20 bowmen. They will just rip through snouts. It's when you get bowmen mixed in that issues happen. And you need bowmen to, you know, counter fire. You need someone else to shoot back at them. But since you're behind walls, you get the defensive bonus. Like, uh, this right here. Uh, the cover too. You get that bonus when they're shooting at you. So when he sent like those 13 warriors, I was not worried. Um, I am running pretty low uh, loyalty though, so we will get some troops up for defenses. Like some warriors here. Because we're kind of sitting on a threshold. Yeah. Uh, you just need to keep up with the Barbarian's usage of ranged weapons. And that's why I must stress the use of trade, because it allows you to specialize labor in other towns. Uh, for the first bit, you want to like really work on your capital, but when you start trading in goods, you're actually going to make a lot of money, like tax-wise, from, tra like, from the trade, the difference there. You're going to get more tax that way than just manually producing there at low cost. Also, it allows you to, you know, focus your labor, labor in other areas that your tile is, you know, good at doing. Now, this tile is going to ranch. And you would to do this, but it's going to do ranching. I know it, you know it, there's a lot of open space. Not a lot of it is really good arable land, but at, like, base 2, I can get some, a lot of meat and leather. So this area will specialize in the production of leather. So it means I can, you know, specialize in the production of leather cloth and I can just export that for profit. Um, probably won't. Well, there's actually a fair amount of clay here, so I might actually focus the production of pottery here compared to the other spot and just import fuel and then export out the pottery because fuel is actually pretty cheap to move around. Uh, you never really have to worry about the melee and like barbarian melee units. 
if you've got decent fortifications and um, troops behind the wall. And uh, even though rock throwers have a very limited range, uh, when you have nothing else and the enemy's just throwing warriors at you, they will do their job. They will hold the line. Like, javelineers can easily handle, like, three times their number. Oh, free wood, sweet. Well, we can build the two that are normally a town this side requires. Good. Yeah. So this is going to improve the quality of life here. Well, but as always, thank you for everyone who are currently watching. I must say that we have about 45 more minutes before I close up the server for the evening. And we will probably be back Saturday, I believe, at 1 1 EST, or GMT minus 4. If someone can convince my government to get rid of daylight saving times, I wouldn't have to worry about EST and GMT minus 5 come like sometime in fall. <clears throat> so if you can convince my happy go lucky Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to um, you know get rid of that stupidity, I'm all for it. What is eating up the leather? Oh, research. That makes sense. I don't know, um, maybe I should do like a video at one point that must like stress the uh, the importance of getting a fort up quickly. Um, because it's going to take time for them to find your nation. Bird of deer, eventually we want to start hunting these things. Bring in more leather, in fact, we have the, the javelins, so we're going to start that now. How much free population do we have? 10. And, you know, I'm not doing too bad, so. Army. Just gonna have like 10 javelineers here. You're a huntsman. Uh, yeah, Imperial Huntswine. There we go. We are going to take out these deer. Rated, I suspect. Anyhow, we are going to get some meat because uh, now our population is really gonna start hurting a little bit. How many deer am I hunting? Just four? Yeah, that'll be easy.
I mean, now I have a rough idea how many inactives there are because I'm just... Oh, there's Chito in Pakistan, so that was one of them. Yeah, they're not even going to build storages for the stuff they build either. So, what happens in this game is if you do not have storages for, like, there will be invisible ground storages that resources will spawn into, but they will decay in those unless you build actual store, like, your basic ground storages at least, or warehouses or granaries. They will naturally decay out in the open, so they're not really... There's just so many things wrong that when they're like, we're an aggressive war nation, it's like, no, you're not. You're not a nation. You're just out there spoiling. A nation builds. There we go. Get some meat. It will be back. Oh, wow. Ugh. Let's get some meat back onto the menu, boys. Um, add some carriers. And hunt some more. Basically, it's just so much wasted potential. <sighs> Pigglesworth Sharpson. Well, I don't know who, what player is that. Maybe I'll put out a warning in case because we did recently get hit so uh recently got a new player piggles worth something 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 of the something um, piggles worth sharpson i'll send a message over to drake So he's aware. If he sees him, he can you know keep an eye. And I know Sheridan's watching, so he will have heard. So Nothing to worry about, but um, just something to keep them aware. Oh, um, yeah, he's a spawn to your south. Yeah, I just wanted to let you be aware that a new player has joined. Um, but at the same time, like, as far as I can tell, he is probably the chieftain of Hamelot. So, not exactly the most offensive name. I don't know what he's called the city, but I just want you all to be aware. jobs. All right. Still says it is okay, Steam Lobby wise. Mm -hmm. 
for researching archery. We have a okay chance, and now that I said that, we're gonna fail, but um, we are aware of it. Next year. Let's go take a look at the housing situation. Um, and let's see how many javelins are made. Four? Um, that's not bad. Let's see. Did they rebuild? I do not think so. Beer! Well, I don't know of barley, so uh, probably not gonna be us. Anyhow, let's just uh, finish up this pattern here. This needs to move over. And then we can start slowly upgrading these buildings to the next level. All oh, right, we could build bells. <laughs> oh damn. Oh, I am of great error right now. We'll set this here. Uh, when we get more hammers, right? Right? Yeah, right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. If I could find flax, that'd be lovely. Uh, well, you know, I don't really have the terrain for flax. I would not grow flax. On this tile, it's <sighs> better off just importing clo clothing from uh, continentals. And they can produce much more textile than I can produce flax. I would need the river valley that Dragokin is on. Destroyed you, what happens? I don't see a new one popping up, so probably have enough housings housing for all. If you eventually get a Grey Deathy, uh, I know Raunch wants to try to revamp the distribution system. I don't know if you are waiting for it to be released on Steam or you're just hoping to grab a key when he releases it, but I hope you can get it. I find the game quite enjoyable. Oh, now I know what I usually do. I haven't done for this. An overflow. Basically, what the barbarians take from this, I'm not too fussed. Uh, basically, what I do is I just restrict these, so only restricted, and it's going to be for flint. But there is a maximum limit on how much is here, so it doesn't flood stockpiles. Um, I don't know what he plans to release on stream. I know he wants to get a few things. You want to join the official? Um, I think he wants to do a new update before he starts that up. I 
like it's definitely in the works, I recall that. This is critical. Uh, official's just not up yet. Uh, recently, like, one nation, there was a super nation in the last one. Definitely won that, made it to 100 points. And essentially the end game content, so, uh, watch this close it, and we are just waiting for the next update. Um, for more. I normally join as you basically go, it should appear on the list for persistent servers. Um, and, uh, when it's up, you just join it through, uh, oh, words that I can't manage right now. Um, even if it's not showing because Steam's not working properly, like the Steam Lobby is not playing nice. You can, you know, direct connect, uh, because Ronch has the address hosted in the official channel of, uh, the Emir Discord. But currently it is not up, so you're not really missing much. Ronch usually announces when he, uh, puts up official again, so keep an eye on the announcement channel. For the Emir server. Um, there, it's not really, well, it depends what you're going for. I don't think, <clears throat> there's really no best tile to settle, I feel. Um, well, usually the rare, the, the strongest early game tile is definitely Arid River. Um, I've described it as, uh, as thus, uh, Continental is a jack of all trades. Uh, their fertility is on average like 2.9 because you have like little patches of gravel here and there that will throw off your farms. So they're actually really good for ranching, but you really want it for farming. Um, uh, conversely, um, their forest tiles are, I would say, are the second best or the second most dense. Uh, wow, I lost a lot of javelin layers in that. Um... So moving on, let's talk about Tropical. Tropical is, is rather rough. Uh, on average, yeah, I would say it's about like 2.4 fertility. Like they'll have the patches of three, right? But on average, like 2.4 to 5, like for an entire tile. Um, its forest tiles are the most dense, so they will easily produce a lot of wood and a lot of fuel, which is really powerful once you get that far along in the game. Uh, yeah, this will do for now. Let's hunt a bit more. Um, and, uh, like, you can choose to start on a tropical, and you'll only settle a tropical biome. Uh, let's talk about Nordic, which you can settle on if you choose, you know, just cold starts. Nordic is, like, a pretty, like, 2.3, like, is rather low. It's like, I'd say it's about tropical. Um, oh, another thing about Tropical is you have a health penalty of like 10. Now, Nordic Strength it has a health bonus of 10 because it doesn't have the same diversity in food. So it gets that bonus. Um, also, if you find a, like a Nordic Swamp. Yeah, uh, when you have strong defenses against Barbs, Sheraton, yeah, you get free materials. That's what I'm doing in Solarium. I haven't really built axes. I just get axes. Uh, yeah, no, um, in Nordic Swamps, you can use a soil miner just to, like, literally mine charcoal. Like, charcoal is just in the ground. It's peat. And, uh, it's just a beautiful thing. There's no better way to describe it. It could fuel most of anything you need to do. And will cover you up to, like, steel, I think, for fuel. 
Uh, and uh, since swamps also carry like a penalty, like it cancels out with the Nordic, so you're not really losing much. Uh, let's talk about oceanic. Uh, for the temperate biomes, oceanic I would say has patches of plus four. It's like the second best agricultural tile that you can get. Um, so I think its average is like on the higher side is like 3.4 because it has those patches of four for an entire tile I mean. Uh, definitely good for agricultural production. It does have a more limited access to... Will I actually ever build these? Yeah, probably not. Limited access to um, crops. I think it can't have cotton. Yeah. But it does allow you to use wheat, apples, and carrots like temperate. So you can't set up a textile industry there, but you could do one hell of a like cider industry with all the apples you can produce. Um, it does allow you to use sheep there compared to like continental biomes, which can only use llamas for wool. Uh, let's talk about arid. Arid on itself, this is what arid is. It does. It has like very low wood density, and I would say it's one of the worst for if you have a forest tile of it. I think Mediterranean might actually be better. Um, but if you have, so I would, I would say its average is probably around like Nordic and uh, tropical without the health penalty or bonuses. And I would probably set it aside as ranch land. Like I would use the good parts for like farming, but I would set aside the rest for like, for ranching. Um, arid rivers though, are very rich. Yeah, I think on average oceanic is probably better because the whole tile is actually pretty decent. Arid rivers or arid lakes are only really rich around the water source, so you have like a very limited stretch that you can actually like really get a high bonus out of. Uh, compared to uh, like oceanic, which is like whole tile is um, like above three average, whereas you know, um, aside from the incredibly rich area around like a lake of like fertility ranging from like four to six, you would have the rest is usually around like two or like, and then you have your flinty gravel areas of one. So depending on the size of the river, you are ranging from a tile that averages from probably around three um, to, uh, to about four. And the drop off's really quick. So you have like this high start with really high fertility and then it drops off like your average and your efficiency bonuses. So I think my favorite tile is Oceanic, though it does have a limited range to goods. Uh, and wheat is a very common good, but it's production of apple, something you should definitely take in consideration because apple naturally has a pretty high demand in most settlements. Thus, it you get pretty good returns on it. People like it, like them apples. I'm not even joking about that. Uh, am I missing any other tiles? There's Mediterranean, which is uh, got its own little uh, biome of food. I think you can settle on one through temperate. Protecting the food. Oh, we need pottery. Oh, right. I've been doing none of that. Ah, uh, we can hold off on javelin production. Right, what was I getting at? Um... We will build maybe not near the fertile land, so we'll build it over here. And then we need like clay. Now, Mediterranean has is kind of like again, like Nordic tropical, it has a lower average fertility throughout the entire tile, but it has its own range of goods. Like, yeah, it's good access, it has access to tomatoes, figs, I believe. Um, tomatoes, figs. Something else. It's not coming to me. Oh, maybe it is just tomato and figs. It does have access to wheat, but wheat's a really common crop, so I want to specialize in it. You can also have grapes there, which is an agricultural good, but I would rather use, like, continental land for grapes, because you have much higher average fertility. And a farm can have a lot of vine vineyards attached to it. Yeah, Mediterranean is an arid without the river fertility. The thing is, is like all your strategies are going to vary depending on the tile you have. 
Olives, that's it. Olives is uh, a unique to Mediterranean. Thank you, Monte. Um, and it's a luxury food uh, that you can also make into um, olive oil. So that's also a luxury good. Now these guys are going to die. We have like 30 javs behind here. And then we have like 10 warriors just sitting there ready to club whatever survivors might punch through. But they're going to die. So I'm not too worried about this combat. And they are just what? Raiding? Raiding. Not really a threat. We should probably disband our hunting party. We can always build it again later. Because we have a lot of jobs available and I would rather those get filled up. Um, again, like Continental is very useful. It can do grapes pretty well. Um, and it can do cotton very well. Unless you uh, set aside like a, an arid river tile to produce just flax, like Continental is pretty strong. But as I said, it's a jack of all trades, master of none, but it was really conducive to trade. Yeah, so our jobs are just gonna rip these bastards apart. Hit the feet. Oh, one got away. So they'll take some goods. Um, we probably took like leather, most likely. I don't know. Uh, am I missing any of the tiles? I'm pretty sure I've gone over them all as we come to a close. We have about 20 minutes left in server time. Yeah, cotton is the only biome that can grow cotton. It's a really good crop. I'm just trying to think of if I've missed any biomes. Like, there's the Arctic biomes that don't do anything. There are desert biomes, which have their own unique crops, but, and they can grow papyrus. But they're rather, like, A, rare to find, like, a river desert, which would be the only way to do it. So it's kind of like arid river, only worse. Like, it does have its stretch of super fertile land, but the surrounding land is far terrible. Yeah, yeah, um, also check out the Porcopedia, it is community run. Uh, you can take a look of all the things, I'm just working off memory, but if I looked it up, that's typically what I look at uh, when I actually play uh, on servers. Like, I use it quite often, and uh, given my recent forays into trade, I am a firm belief that markets are only good for distributing imported goods. And stalls are really good at distributing goods uh, for you know local production. Like that's my firm belief. Like after playing on Solarium for so long. Oh, are you gonna fix? No, I guess you're just gonna hang. That happens. Combat's hit or miss for me. So we're just gonna end this. It's probably because I'm recording at the same time. My video encoder is also using my GPU. So, yeah. Like, mirror itself like makes your GPU run rather warm. They took stuff, but uh, yeah, fair enough. Right, what I wanted to do is I wanted to just delete this, force everyone into jobs, get them doing things. We still have foreign actives. Yeah, yeah, for lo no, no, for hunting and fishing, I still use stalls. Um, but what I typically do, if I have more than one, like, hunting source, like, I will locally sell the one, and then I would export the meat from the other one so I can get more of the leather out of the hunting spot. So it's far more productive.
and I'll sell the meat to multiple sources, that way they don't have to worry about ranching nearly as much. And I would rather my, like, sailors and my hunters to be, you know, as wealthy as they can be. Because, again, that affects my overall demand. That means I can produce more goods or send more goods into an area and have an overall, like, good supply-demand ratio. Wealth is power for the Porcos. This has got to be critical to find more water. Um... Mm, we are literally on the dot for demand, so we should probably produce a little bit more in excess when we get more hammers. <laughs> how about time? Uh, how is that doing? Our... Yes, we need that workforce. Even if it's only temporary. What we're going to do is we're going to build another tool maker. I don't know. It's uh, really up to the person. Like, for fish, I would rather them... I don't know. It's odd, but I wouldn't want to waste. It's weird. Yeah, um, typically I try to, like, uh, you know, siphon it off. Like, um, try to uh, husband my resources. And I try to send multiple sources of something off to an area. Now this place is going to have a lot of meat in the future. I just know it because just inclined that way. Plenty of inactives. Good. We're going to need probably more flints. What's my overall demand? So I need a few more of these suckers. At least two more. Just like tap out at like 1.2? Yeah. Because I normally don't actually have fish in all my settlements. I use Sometimes in a game I might not have no fish in any of my settlements. And I find, like, too much population can work against you. Like, I'm pretty convinced that as your population grows, the scale of the barbarian attack will also, you know, grow. Um, because the barbarians that attack me on Solarium aren't nearly as vicious as the ones that attack, like, Emniti, or the basically the leader on that server. Like, I don't find it as threatening. So, it you know, it works in your favor to have a more efficient... Uh, like higher producing uh, GDP poor porco, so you're just wealthier overall. And they can import more goods and you can make more profit. And it, uh, and it also allows you to uh, subsidize your tool, tool production as well. Um, you're just trading between your two cities. What's a minor part? Like, to me, trade is a pretty major part of this game. Like, I would say I make more through trade on Solarian. Like, I think I make as much through trade as I do through taxation. Let me see. Because I have it here. Yeah, I make on the Solarium server uh, for my nation with a GDP of like 11k. My taxation is like 344, but my trade balance after like subsidizing everything is around 336. That's a really good trade balance. And it's really uh, taken off now that I've been like importing such things, such luxuries like chickpeas. Yeah, like, uh, it is a small minority, hunters and sailors, but it really helps overall. It's just another thing 
That works out in your favor, making them wealthier so they can afford more goods. Uh, that means they have higher like quality of life so they can research text further down the line. And I won't have to worry about things like subventions and waste state power just to like make sure the hunters have like a few more coins in their pocket. You're right that they're a rather small part when you compare it to like the number of farmers I typically run. Or in this case, I think ranchers are also farmers, so yeah, we'll be having a lot of farmers in this game. Uh, yeah, like my heart, my hunters here. Um, will become a smaller and smaller part as we go on. through this meat all too quickly. We are going to set this to critical. So really when you like recruit soldiers, things set at like higher levels in this chain will be the least likely to recruit it. Or uh, if somehow you lose troops and these guys are lost, like replacements will be much more forthcoming. Like this, these will be the first jobs to fill if someone new comes to uh, the workforce. Also, one, two. Definitely, as uh, my nation gets larger, restricted, allow clay. Max. This is going to become more apparent. I'm not going to be able to like fine tune everything. Um, I'm going to make sure it's only in restricted. I think I'll do the same thing for stone. There's a maximum limit on what I'm holding, and it doesn't clog too much over here. Uh, I want to get the bows behind walls. Yeah, actually, I found meat actually far more useful, like when you uh, specialize tiles in just producing the meat and you don't spread like butcheries everywhere. I find it pretty useful to send the meat out from an area that has an overabundance uh, to these areas. So meat's actually rather useful. Um, and they get a pretty penny that way. And they also get a pretty penny when you're exporting, when their goods are made into leather cloth or furniture. And again, they'll get more money because uh, the people that produce them will also export at a higher price than they sell locally. Merchants have jobs, and then they have money, and I get money. It's 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 a pretty good situation. Restricted allow stone. I don't like limiting the amount of leather I hold on hand, but sorry, bug, it's bothering me. Let's kill. Stone, 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 and then like empty all. And only oh, restricted. And I have a pretty optimal uh, trade strategy now that I figured out. Solarium, I think, was like final stage of testing, and I have a rough idea how to better do things now. Anyhow, the servers will be closing in about six or so minutes. Huh. I have a rough idea who this player is. Kim the Humble, I believe, is Kim Jong-un on the community. 
you know, the best of names, but um, he seems to be a rather... Like, I've never had any issues with him, so I don't think he's a griever. And no, I'm not calling out people, I'm just... I have to be more aware because my options to do anything are rather limited. Mr. Anderson. Oh. Yeah, just to give you like a rough idea, we'll be closing about six or so. So if you're doing something, I would make sure it's pretty good, just in case you, you join a bit later uh, when the server starts back up again. It happens. I think I've got everyone out of huts. Using more flints. I have that theoretical maximum. Get max. Max. I want to make sure all that stuff is in here. Our extra javelins. Good! Yeah, actually, I was a bit surprised. He's see, he must just you know, like the name. That's fine. Like I was wary of it at first, but after this long, he hasn't been. Well, to put it nicely, to put it bluntly, a shit disturber. I got. Uh, I never had any issue. Seems like a genuine. Seems to be a pretty good player or a good learner at the game. He wants to play. He wants to have fun. I. Like that. Uh, do I want to do this at this point? 76% chance. Oh, we can always hunt for a bit more, I suppose. Yeah. It was a pleasant surprise. Eventually, clay will be used as a building material and a lot of things. Is our population growing? Water. Water. Well, I think more than enough. Excellent. Just gonna make sure, Hawk. There we go. Well, I'm calling him, so... He just needs to pick up. will be done in three minutes so we'll know next time actually are we producing pottery yeah i want to have about 16 stored ah here we go hello
the hell, I'm going to put that down for now, just in case we don't get any more barbarians. Hello? I'm going to try the call again, see if that helps. I'm going to save. And close the server. Uh, let's see here. I'm out peace. Well, thank you for joining. Thank you. So, oh, there we go. Yeah. Hello. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So there was a there was an issue. I wasn't getting through to your uh, connection. So, oh yeah, the, the... yeah, it seems to be seems to be working now. So, um, yeah, that was an interesting uh, episode. A lot of just trying to figure out what the heck to do, and not enough time to do it. In. No, uh, like uh, when I saw the invasion come, I was like, oh, my budget's finally fixed, but I haven't fi like fixed up. Uh... My military that I had disbanded because my budget was so shite last time yeah. around. So uh, I was like, they had bow pigs, and I was like, oh, they are going to outrange my jet pigs, and I am going to die. <laughs> and it was an, it was an invasion that hit. Yeah, it was an invasion. Yeah. So that's why I abandoned. I was like, this is my capital, and I know Campus Aquilarii is not built up enough. Yeah. No, it uh, it also got ransacked by that guy. So. Uh, that yeah, I. We got hit. I just got hit by a uh, hundred and whatever barbarians. You want to know where they came from? From my old capital. <laughs> uh, so the moment they spawned, I've seen this happen now four times in different games. You take the moment I take out a barbarian village, it instantly causes another barbarian village somewhere to spawn an army on me. It's happened all four times that I've taken out a village. Uh, it's usually a matter of timing. Uh, most of the time I can take out a village and not worry about being attacked in the meantime. But I do know uh, a new village will become like the barbarian capital that all attacks are spawned from if you, uh, if you do so. Yeah, but, Skippen uh, has been doing the attacks. And I just took Skippen, so it's going to be my new forest town. So, uh, the, um, yeah, now we, now I, at the moment I did, like literally the, the moment I, the army finished, it was like, ta-da, 100 dudes are attacking. And of course, now they're coming from a different side of the army, or of the kingdom. So now they're, instead of raiding my capital, they went and hit the 15 guys that were standing in the other spot. <laughs> so, oops. Well, fortunately, they just grabbed their stuff and left. So, whatever. <laughs> whoever takes Akilopoli will have a pretty good time because there's a good copper deposit there, and there's a solid amount of limestone, and there's a tin deposit. In your actual capital, old capital? In my old capital, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty stocked. It's got uh, it also has cotton. eggs and 20-some. It does, doesn't it? Stocked or actually growing? Growing. Wow. It yeah, has cotton fields. I had a textile go, industry. So. I just <laughs> had I fixed my so. budget too late. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have been able to keep it. Yeah. All right. Well, I am uh, I had a good time. Hope you did too. And we will uh, we'll be back Saturday, correct? Saturday, uh, normal time, 12 my time, 1 p.m. your time. And I'll try to give an update to see, like what happens to uh, the griefers that uh, that would be awesome. along. That'd be good to hear. Because be I want to know hear. too, right? So I yeah. will see you all next time, and I'll see you on Saturday, Drake. All right, sounds good. Cheers. Cheers.